What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Alderson. She's gonna tell us all about the field of neurology as, as, as well as why she went into uh, neurology some, and some uh, tips for you guys. Dr. Alderson, welcome. Uh, thank you uh, for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Antonio. Um, tell us uh, who you are and kind of uh, what you do. So I am a uh, chief resident at um, um, Beth Israel Deaconess in Boston, um, and I am uh, in the specialty of neurology, so I deal with brain and spinal cord disorders. Gotcha. Um, and we went to med school together, for people who don't know, at Georgetown Med School. Uh, mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, you, you always uh, love the uh, brain and the, uh, the brain and spinal cord and how those two interact. But what was it about neurology that got you interested in? Mm -hmm. So I think neurology is um, a great field because it sort of weds um, internal medicine with a little bit of a subspecialty field. So um, you get to... Um, you get to specialize and focus on certain diseases, but you still get to take care of the whole person right. because the brain, spinal cord, and all the peripheral nerves sort of affect the whole body. Right. Um, so you're really dealing with um, all sorts of issues, and, and no matter what type of patient you take care of, they usually will have a, a neurologic disorder associated with their underlying illness. Okay. And what is a typical day for you? Uh, it kind of starts at what time and ends at what time? How do your days usually go as neurologists? So it's variable in residency. Um, as, uh, as you can imagine, it's long hours. And uh, um, depending on if you're inpatient versus outpatient, that's also variable. Um, for the most part, uh, residency hours are getting in around 6.30, 6, 6.30 in the morning, and then leaving usually around the same time at night, around 6 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you have clinics some days, then those days are a little bit shorter. So a lot of neurology is outpatient, and um, so you can have a pretty good lifestyle at the end of it if you choose to do an outpatient subspecialty, um, usually working like 9 to 5 or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it takes, to become a neurologist, it takes four years of college, four years of medical school, and then four years of residency. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. So you do a year of internal medicine and three years of neurology. Um, and most people who want to stay in academic neurology, so work at one of the big university hospitals, will do a subspecialty uh, or fellowship training. And that's variable amounts of time. So that can be anywhere from one to three years, depending on if you want to do research as well. Okay. And can you talk about some of those uh, fellowship opportunities? So you can specialize, after you get done with your neurology residency, you can subspecialize into what fellowships? Sure. So there's actually a lot of different fellowships for neurology. Um, some of the more popular ones you can think about are, um, are stroke or vascular neurology. Um, neuro ICU is becoming increasingly popular for people that want to stay inpatient and take care of critically ill, um, critically ill patients. Um, if you want to go outpatient, you can do neuromuscular medicine, which is what I'm doing. And um, those those types of patients you take care of in neuromuscular medicine are um, the myasthenic patients, patients with Guillain-Barre syndrome, peripheral neuropathies, ALS, things like that. So I'm a little partial to those. Gotcha. Um, and uh, movement disorders is another type that people um, will, will go into, and that's very popular. So Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, epilepsy, cognitive neurology, MS, there's sleep neurology, there's, there's a ton of different subspecialties. So a lot of different options that you can go into. Mm -hmm. um, and in the field of neurology, are there any procedures that you do? Is it are you mostly clinically, uh, clinic-based? Yes, yeah, so um, I'd say our most common procedure is doing a lumbar puncture. Um, we're able to get uh, cerebral spinal fluid from people and get a good idea about if they have inflammatory or infectious processes occurring in the brain or the spinal cord. Um, and, uh, and that's something that you pick up fairly quickly. Um, otherwise, if you do um, 
movement disorders or neuromuscular medicine. You may learn how to do Botox for certain people with dystonia or um, issues with excess salivation because of uh, weakness of their bulbar muscles. You can also do something called EMG nerve conduction studies, which is basically looking at how well the nerves and muscles work. So lots of different procedures you can do. Okay. And you spoke about some of the, uh, the patients that you see. Can you describe like a typical uh, day, like you're saying, uh, this sort of patients in neurology, what kind of patients are you normally treating? Sure. So um, if you just have a general neurology clinic, you're typically seeing things you would see um, and generally in the community. So a lot of patients with migraine or different headache syndromes, people with back pain or um, uh, certain types of cervical or lumbar spondylosis from arthritis. Okay. Um, you can see peripheral neuropathy. You can see Parkinson's patients. Um, patients who have uh, various um, uh, new onset seizures, um, uh, any sort of new type of tick syndrome, things like that. Gotcha. And you said you're chief resident this year. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what was the hardest part of uh, residency training for you? Um, I would have to say the hours. Oh. So. Um, it's not, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Um, I think medicine in general is a very rewarding field, but it is something that you really, really want to have to be able to uh, say at the end of the day that you would not do anything else because sure. it's um, a lot of work and um, you have to justify missing a lot of things in life in order to continue doing what you're doing. Okay. And once someone completes their college, their medical school, their residency, and I know it varies by location, but how much can a neurologist expect to make like outside of your training? Or out of your mm -hmm. training? So it depends. Um, and if you stay in academics, it's different than if you go into private practice. But for the most part, I would say the range is anywhere from 150000 to 300000 Okay. All right. Uh, Dr. Otterson, any other advice you would have for uh, someone who's interested in a field of medicine or field of neurology? What kind of advice would you give them? So I think it depends on what stage they're at. So if you are thinking about medical school in general, it's always good to get some sort of experience in um, either a clinic or in a research lab in order to get your feet wet and really start thinking about the various um, neurologic processes that occur getting something on your CV, um, getting some first author publications, getting used to taking care of neurologic patients. These are patients with chronic diseases and they, um, contrary to what people will say, we can make a lot of difference in these patients' lives. Um, and, uh, and it's a very rewarding field. So I would highly recommend neurology for anybody that's interested. Gotcha. All right, and I ask this of all my guests, three last questions so you can give a one or two word answer. Um, what is your favorite food? Um, I would have to say right now I am really into tacos. Tacos? Okay, that's a great, great choice. Uh, what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? I'd have to say playing with my dog. Playing you know, dog. My, even my dog Atticus. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, and in orthopedic surgery, my favorite thing is spine surgery. Do you have a favorite neurological disorder or did you like patients uh, like, that you like seeing in a patient or uh, what is your favorite thing in neurology? Um, I, it's hard to say favorite, um, but I would say the most fascinating thing to me, I think, is probably something like Huntington's disease or um, myasthenia gravis. And I'm going to be taking care of patients with myasthenia. So I really like that. Got gotcha. you. Well, Dr. Otterson, thank you so much uh, for coming on today, and uh, congrats on all your success. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe, as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you next time. Thanks for having me.